What's it cost to own a car in Finland? That's today's question. Total cost to own. We're talking fuel, insurance, taxes, parking tickets, fines. Every single cost that comes with owning a vehicle. YLE, the Finnish Broadcasting, the Finnish Broadcasting Corporation asked the Automobile and Touring Club of Finland this exact question. They replied with some information saying that if you drop 17,800 euros on a Seat Ibiza, a decent sized five-seater car, expect it to run you 5,083 euros, including vehicle depreciation. At 18,000 kilometers a year, by my calculation, that's about 28 cents a kilometer. Interesting, yeah? I don't buy new cars. Probably never will. And not everybody does. You're, you're rolling the dice. You never know if you're gonna end up with a lemon, or if you're gonna luck out and save some cash. So we're gonna look at how much has owning a vehicle cost us here in Finland. First off, don't make our mistake. Don't own a luxury vehicle. Period. It's incredibly common advice. Listen to it. Don't do it. Got it? Good. Okay. Better advice? Don't ever own an unmaintained, decade-old luxury car. In my mind, a luxury car is any car that starts at 30,000 euros and up. Heck, for me personally, anything that goes from 20,000 euros and up would be a luxury. Here's the story. It's the year 2015. While hanging out somewhere outside Finland, somewhere in Europe, we end up being given a 2004 Volvo V40. Something that honestly, we probably should have just tried to sell right away. Cashed out. It was our first car though. We didn't know much. We weren't thinking logically. I mean, come on. It's a car. Of course we kept it. It was a car that under my assumption, likely never saw any maintenance. Sitting on its square tires, somewhere outside Finland. The brakes were non-existent, the clutch was worn, the transmission was on the rocker. It wasn't something worth really dealing with, it definitely was not worth importing. So, I drove it across seven countries and into Finland. Customs? They decided that our worthless piece of junk was worth something. 1300 euros in import taxes for a hunk of scrap metal on wheels. Customs, they didn't care that I was about to empty my wallet in repairs. Obviously, didn't pass import inspection. Repair, after repair, after repair. Cracked taillights, CV joints have to be replaced, shocks, and so on. And being a Volvo, parts just ain't cheap. I'd take the car to a mechanic, get a quote for repairs in absolute disbelief, thinking to myself, hey, there's something going on here, they're trying to scam me. Nope, that wasn't the case. I couldn't find the parts cheaper myself. 2,000 euros to get it back into a passable state. Mind you, not, not good condition, just enough to pass that inspection. And yeah, I know, 3,500 euros, it can get you a pretty decent vehicle in the used market. But obviously, we still didn't know better. We kept the car. Hoping for a better year? I don't know. So with that, 514 euros for roughly 7,500 kilometers worth of diesel fuel, 248 euros in yearly vehicle taxes, and that nice added 250 euro diesel tax. Yippee. Throw in 886 euros in insurance. <sighs> Tack on a few other fees, and before you know it, we're at 5,253 euros and 80 cents for the year. 70 cents a kilometer, over twice YLE's report. Absolutely insane. What we got ourselves into, we got ourselves into a money hole. Maybe next year will be better. Second year was pretty bad. My numbers, uh, we, we threw on another 27,500 kilometers to it. We were in the middle of a road trip through Eastern Europe and our engine started acting up. Went around to get a couple of repair quotes, and we meet a mechanic who comes out and he tells us, you're gonna be lucky if you can get another 5,000 kilometers out of this. He said, look, I'm not gonna repair this car. This car is not worth the 4,000 euros minimum. You're gonna have to put into it to get it back in shape. And you know what? When a mechanic doesn't want to take your money, you trust him. So with the mechanic praying that we'd make it back home safely, we were off. Spoiler, we made it back, and it was done. 
couldn't sell the car. Nobody wanted it. It was undrivable. It couldn't pass the yearly inspection. Yet again, it wasn't worth anything. Dealers, on the other hand, they were all happy to take in a trade-in. So in the middle of a winter storm, we were running around the city test driving cars. Meet the 2008 Panda. And as bad as that snowstorm was, this car, this car was unstoppable. Plow right through that snow, it would climb those snow-covered icy hills, easily riding above all the heavy snowfall. It's like nothing I had ever driven before. To top it off, that small compact footprint made it so easy to whip around the city, all while boasting a higher ride height, a tall interior, and the tiny 1.2 liter engine that growled. It felt like that diesel engine in the Volvo, a very capable mini off-road vehicle, if you will. I liked it. We liked it. We did a quick look. The car had a pristine service record. Whoever owned this car did every necessary repair. It had just put in a brand new timing belt. Dropped the 2,200 euros and we were off. Just another 3,000 kilometers until the end of that year. And oh, what an expensive year that was. 6,600 euros in total. That includes the purchase of the vehicle. I'm not calculating depreciation separately, because honestly, when I'm looking at a car like this, I'm planning to drive it down into the ground until the day that it just doesn't make sense to run anymore. But hey, even at 6,600 euros for the year, that's 22 cents a kilometer. Hey, that's not bad. Then, it was 2017. It turns out that insurance for the Panda was half the price. We had no diesel tax to pay, and the car tax was lower. Cool. Now, when summer came, I realized that I hadn't really taken a good look at those summer tires. Worn down and useless. New summer tires it is then. At 167 euros. That. Smaller tires, lower cost. Otherwise, for the car, it was a pretty uneventful year. A chip in the windshield, repaired for 40 euros. Put in a new battery, oil, oil changes, air filter changes. Everything you would consider your standard yearly maintenance. Yeah, we put in about 20,000 kilometers. 3,000 for the year was not that bad at all. You know, at this point, I realize it's a decade-old car. But hey, like I said, solid maintenance record, brand new timing belt, brand new axles. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, yes, it's an old car. And future costs are inevitable. Yeah, it's that roll of the dice. Just hoping for the best. But for 2017, 15 cents a kilometer, uh, pretty good in my opinion. Our average, though, for the three years, sits at 27 cents a kilometer. Looking at that, yeah, that's, that's on par with the average cost of a new car. Yeah, you get your highs and your lows. And who knows if the automobile and touring club of Finland would have picked a cheaper car to go buy. Maybe like a 10,000 euro brand new Dacia Sandero. Would those numbers be any worse or better than what I'm doing now? Who knows? I'm hoping that if it works out for me, I'll come out ahead. Only time's gonna tell. For me, you gotta keep in mind that a used car can often mean no financial responsibility to be tied to. You own the car. It's yours. You owe nothing to nobody. And when you gotta give it up, you can just give it up. What's the takeaway? Don't get yourself into an unmaintained luxury vehicle. It'll eat you alive. Try to take a look at service records. Do your best to look at the car before buying. In the best case, if you can, do let a mechanic take a look at it, or at least a mechanically inclined friend. Learn how to do some minor repairs yourself. It's not that hard to replace a battery, change windshield wipers, or even change your brakes. And most importantly, make the decision that you feel more comfortable with. I think this is a pretty accurate total cost owned video. I've taken into account every single cost involved, including the two parking tickets I got over the years. It's every cost accounted for. Yeah, cars are expensive. They're convenient, but expensive. Just something to consider. 
You know, I like my panda. Everybody out there, no matter where you are in this world, do have a good day, good morning, and a good night. Bye-bye.